What's up guys, how you doing? Welcome to another video and welcome to another Tutorial Tuesday. That's right, we've made it to the second week of Tutorial Tuesday. Maybe we'll make it to the third week as well. So today is the first of kind of, I guess, like a mini series that I will do over the course of probably a few weeks all to do with shooting sports with the Canon EOS R. I was really excited to get my first chance using the camera to shoot some sports just the other day. The Surrey Scorchers, the basketball team that I work with, did a bit of an outdoor training session. Well, I say no, the team didn't, just a couple of the players from the team did. Uh, I got a chance to go along and shoot them, get a few photos of them doing their training in an outdoor court. Socially distance, of course, with still the current restrictions going on here in the UK. But it gave me a chance to take the EOS R and I thought I would push it and I would only take the EOS R although I did take the 1DX to do a bit of a comparison which you'll see in this video but primarily I just shot with the Canon EOS R to see how it held up for sports. I'm going to share those findings with you today going to be a great video let's go. Before we get into the video itself, guys, I'm gonna ask you to do all of the usual YouTube stuff for me. Make sure you go hit the like button. Make sure you subscribe if you are new. Make sure you comment below and let me know. And that one's really important to me for this video. Make sure you comment below and let me know your thoughts or your experience with the Canon EOS R for sports. Really interested to see if anybody else has been trying it out, if anyone else has been using it. I know Peter Reed Miller did a video where he'd been using it. That was really interesting. But hopefully I will try and use it a little bit more extensively extensively than he did because I know he gave it a tester and then he's kind of cracked on with his 1DX Mark III which makes perfect sense I probably would also be using that if I had a 1D Mark III so hopefully by the time I've been waffling on you guys have hit that like button subscribed everything else let's get in to talking about this EOS R for sports so as I said at the start of the video I was lucky enough to have an opportunity to shoot sports a rare rare opportunity because we are still in the midst of lockdown although it's getting eased right now ultimately we're still in lockdown down in the UK but really really pleased I got a chance to take this camera and shoot some sports down at an outdoor court not too far from where I live about half an hour from where I live where some of the Surrey Scorchers players were doing like an outdoor workout that was just the other day I filmed some footage whilst I was down there so in a second we'll jump to that so you guys can see how we got on and then we'll come back here and I will share with you some of my thoughts now what I will say first of all a couple of really key things uh, I'm going to do a whole separate video around how I set up the camera for sports talking settings and all that kind of stuff I also should share with you that I had the grip on the camera I've bought the grip especially for basketball I think that's really important because so much of basketball is a portrait sport as in it is shot portrait so the grip helped me out a load there will be a whole video all around the settings and setup so there won't be too much of that in this video although there will be a little bit anyway let's jump over to previous Rob a couple of days ago down at the court and then we will come back here Right guys, just got it down here now. Um, it's not the type of basketball arena that maybe you normally see me photographing, but it's a pretty decent park actually. It's got like perspective backboards and stuff, which is which is awesome. We don't normally see that um, at parks in the UK anyway. So gonna go shoot some basketball, gonna see how we get on. Really looking forward to testing out the EOS R properly with doing some sports. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go in here, get these photos, take some shots, gonna head back home and we will talk in the office and I will let you know my thoughts, let you know how it's gone and of course I will share some photos with you. So come and join in, let's go see some basketball, let's go. Right, just got back in the car guys. Um, summary, I think it went pretty well. Autofocus, definitely good. Definitely got some great images. Some bits which aren't great and especially when I compare with my 1DX, which I did with a couple of bits. But let's talk about all that when we get back to the office. Let's go. 
So there we go guys, welcome back to present day and welcome back to the office. So yeah, look, overall we got on really well, right? Got some beautiful shots. I've shared a couple of those through the video already and I'll share all of them at the end so you can have a look at them in a little bit more detail if you want to. It's actually all these shots rotating on the screen in the background right there as well. But really, really good. The biggest thing for me is that the quality of the images, and I mean by that, like the colour and the detail and, and the actual pitch quality I found to be absolutely fantastic. I deliberately shot everything in JPEG to try to keep it realistic in terms of how I would shoot a sports event. I shoot in JPEG so that I can send images quickly and I've talked about that previously. If I'd shot in RAW obviously I'd have had even more ability to work with the images but I didn't do a huge amount of those. The images you're seeing they had the colours maybe ever so slightly tweaked although to be honest not very much at all. I'm talking like a plus five vibrance in Lightroom something like that. A little bit of highlights reduced. Uh, it was a really bright day and in line with that I brought some of the shadows up slightly. Tiny tweaking contrast contrast, tiny bit of sharpening, but overall not very much. There's been a minimal amount done to these images that you're seeing in this video. So I think the first thing to talk about is what was the actual camera like to use as a sports camera? Because obviously it's tiny, right? And the reason I don't have it in my hand is because you guys are on it right now. I'm shooting this video with the EOS R. But as I said earlier on, I did use the grip. Now, I think that's really important, actually, because I can't imagine shooting sports using that camera without the grip because I'm so used to using my 1DX as a big, chunky camera. And I quite like that. I quite like the feel of that in my hands. So I think that will be quite important for me, especially if I'm using the EOS R on my 300mm on the monopod, I think it will feel a lot more balanced if I have the battery grip on there. So that's probably quite an important thing to say. But yeah, with that, it felt really good in the hand. It felt natural. I didn't feel like I was using a non-sports camera to shoot sports. And whilst that might sound silly, you do get that feeling sometimes. I used the 70D to shoot sports once a bit of a test and, and you felt like you were using a non-sports camera to shoot sports and you didn't get that feeling with the EOS R. Another really big plus side is the autofocus, right? I had it set in continuous focus mode, so in AI focus mode. Focus was spot on. I didn't really notice any misfocuses. I got one or two photos which weren't quite sharp, but, but no more than I would have got with my 1DX. That's fairly normal with a sport that's moving all around the place like basketball. Sometimes just a little fraction of a millisecond, it changes it. And so every now and again, you will misfocus. But I, I found overall, the focus to be great with the EOS R, not any problem at all. I was using the AI servo, back button focus, and I'll talk about all that in my settings video, but I found it really, really great. Auto focus, no problems whatsoever. Now, something really interesting, right? Because when I read up on it, one of the biggest things that people talk about when it comes to shooting sports with this camera is the blackout that you get in the viewfinder after you've taken a few continuous frames. Now, there's two sides to this, right? The first thing I will say is that I didn't really notice it being an issue. I found I was still able to track everything okay. The way that I did that was I turned off the image review. When you get the camera, it automatically comes with an image review. So so after you take the photo, you see it briefly in the viewfinder. I turned that off, so that wasn't happening. You still did get a slight blackout, but I, I, I didn't find it affecting me. It didn't stop me tracking the action or anything like that. But the flip side to that, this was very much like a training session. It was lots of shooting, lots of drills. It wasn't a game, so I wasn't having to chase action around the court. And it will be interesting when we test it further in that kind of environment to see if I noticed that being more of an issue then. But I got to say I, I really didn't notice it being a problem this time and because I was so aware of it because I've heard other people talk about it I was really looking out for it I was almost expecting it to be a problem and if anything that made me more surprised that it wasn't really an issue for me at all. Now one thing of course that is a big difference especially for myself using the 1DX now the 1DX shoots at 12 frames per second that means if I'm pressing that button down I am gunning frames off left right and center whereas of course the EOS R is much slower. As standard, it shoots eight frames per second. So already there, we've lost a third of the frames per second. But the bigger issue is that if you want to shoot in continuous focus mode, which, which I really always would for sports, then it drops to five frames per second. 
Now, I've got to say, I didn't really notice that being a problem. I, I'm not the type of guy who tends to like fire off 10, 12 shots every time you press the shutter button. I probably actually naturally do shoot three or four frames in short bursts. So I didn't notice it being a big problem, but I did notice it being different. Now, as you'll see, for example, when, when I put some images on the screen in one second, what it means is that you will get less frames of a particular moment of action. Now, a lot of times when you shoot sports, basketball, someone taking a shot, football, someone kicking the ball, making a tackle, you'll have a few frames and you look back for the photo that demonstrates what I call the peak of the action and that's the frame that you pick. Now of course if you're shooting at 12 frames per second and you held that button down for a second, when you then look back you've got 12 frames to choose from. In comparison with this you've got five frames to choose from. So it does give you less ability to catch a moment exactly how you want it. You'll see what I mean with these images I put on the screen right now. So the first set of these images was shot with the 1DX. This is one of the players from Surrey, Skylar White, taking a jump shot and you'll see how many different frames I've got from that same moment. In comparison with the EOS R, I've got less frames, I've got less to choose from and in fact in the last frame you're going to see that the ball has just gone out the top of the frame. Now of course I could have shot a bit wider and that would have meant that that was less of a problem and whilst I didn't notice this being a big issue certainly it's noticeable that you will get less frames per second and therefore less shots to choose from of those key moments when you're using this camera in continuous focus mode. For you guys who are interested in the lens pretty much every photo that you have seen here was taken with the 70 to 200 so just the EF lens the regular Canon EF lens, the 70 to 200, not the new RF model. This is the standard EF lens. And of course that meant I was using an adapter. I still didn't get any kind of focus issues using the adapter. I didn't notice any problem with it at all. So anybody who's worried about will the EF lenses work effectively with that camera, my experience of that is yet yeah, absolutely. My main sports lenses are my 2470, my 70 to 200 and my 300 mil. I've tested all of those with this camera, no problems whatsoever. That's absolutely no issue for me. So I think in summary, I'm really happy with it and I was really surprised and actually probably surprised at the extent to which other people have dismissed this camera's ability to shoot sports. No, it's not designed for sports, but loads of cameras aren't designed for sports. Loads of people shoot sports with like a 5D Mark IV. That's not designed for sports, but it still does the job. It still works. So I, I think overall it's pretty good. And I'm gonna carry on doing my testing. The next video I'm gonna do is gonna be all about the settings. I'm gonna talk about how I've set up the EOS R to shoot sports and action, uh, wildlife, really anything that's moving. I'm gonna show you how I would set up the camera. And then as soon as we can get back out there to proper events, we're going to test it properly and we'll see how it works in those environments as well. In the meantime, though, I hope you guys enjoyed this little update. If you want to go check out Instagram, we can see some more of those photos at Rob Samble Sport and at Scorchers Photog. Those are the main two places to go and see those kind of photos of the basketball. In the meantime, guys, thank you very much for watching and I will see you, I will see you on the next video.